Hi, this is Pam Buddha of Heartspun Quilts. Welcome back to Mondays with Marcus. This is our second session. And I'd like to tell you a few hints about making my project back in time. There are three basic units used to make the blocks in back in time. The first is the half square triangle, which I have made larger and I'm trimming down and I'll demonstrate that in just a bit. Just a basic four patch and a flying geese unit, which I will also demonstrate how I make those. So let's get started with trimming a half square triangle. So what I like to use when I'm trimming half square triangles is the block lock ruler. Uh, there are several things I like about it in that it really trims in eighth inch increments Half square triangles, um, well in this case the ruler is four and a half inches, so from you know one, one half to four, doesn't matter. And I also like it because it has this groove here which accommodates a seam allowance. So therefore then the ruler does not rock back and forth. Now the thing I like to remember is that the Block Lock logo goes on top of the light print when you have pressed to the dark and then re reverse for with lock on the light part, the light fabric. And in this case, for we're making the half square triangles for our shoe fly block, which is in the center of one of the stars. We're going to trim them to one and three quarters. So I can move the ruler anywhere up and down the seam allowance so that the one and three quarter inch measure is in the middle. You always want to trim something on all four sides of the unit. So I can make the first cut here, going this way and this way. And then what I love about this ruler is that you don't have to pick up the unit, you don't have to pick up the ruler. You just kind of put your fingers on the opposite ends of the um, ditch there and just turn it 180 degrees and then you pull it down until you get to the one and three quarter and you're ready to trim the other two sides. Isn't that the slickest? So let me do that again for you. Black Lock logo goes on the light print. Let's move it away from the light. We want to make sure that there's something to trim on all four sides and we put our one and three quarter inch square, imaginary square in the center. Trim two sides. I think I cut that whole one here. Very gently turn it clockwise, which is towards the ditch of the seam. Bring it down to one and three quarters on the just trim side. Here's our just trim side, and now we're trimming the rest. It goes pretty quick once you get the hang of it. And you will continue to trim them to one and three quarters. The wonderful thing about this ruler as well is that any leftover half square triangles can always be trimmed to something smaller for a different project. Black lock rulers are available at your local quilt shop and also at heartspunquilts.com. So now that our half square triangles are trimmed, we can assemble the pieces for the shoe fly block, which is pretty straightforward. In any case, any time that you have a plain square, in this case a rectangle, to a piece, you would press towards the plane. It's the way that it's going to want to go anyway, but then it also creates opposing seams when you put, um, press to the sashing. So now we have the units for our shoe fly sew them together into rows, press, sew the rows together and press, and you've got your cute little shoe fly block. Then we've got our finished shoe fly, which then becomes the center for our shoe fly star block. And that brings us to the part about making flying geese. And that's up next. 
So the way that I like to make flying geese, and Lord knows that there's many, many ways to do it, but my favorite method is connector corner method. And sometimes we have a little problem with those connector corners, which are used in so many blocks and units, um, not just flying geese, but I have found that there are four principles of making a perfect connector corner every time, no matter what unit you're working on. So it all starts with a base and a connector corner. The connector corner is always a square, but the base can be anything. It could be a rectangle, a square, a block corner, a sashing, a border, anything. Now we want to make sure, number one, that things are, are cut correctly but the very first step in making them is to draw a diagonal line from point to point now we want to make sure that the drawn line is what goes from point to point not your ruler after that is done we're going to place the flying the uh, connector corner on its base so this is the second most important thing is that you want to make sure that it is just perfectly set on its base. So the raw edges are even on all three sides. Sometimes it's only two sides if you're putting it on another square, a big square. But in this case, we want to make sure it's on all three sides. So take the time to really place it perfectly. After it's placed, the next instruction is to sew on the diagonal line. And that's a bit of a misnomer because I like to sew just a thread inside the seam allowance. To It's sort of the same thing as a scant quarter, but it allows for the few threads that you're going to lose in the fold. And I'm going to bring this up, and I've done this in red thread so that you can see how close the stitching is on the inside of the seam allowance to the line that I drew. Which side is the seam allowance side? Well, it's always the corner side because you're going to take this point and put it up here. And so this is the part that you're going to cut off. Therefore, this is your seam allowance right there. So it's always the corner side. This is not a corner, it's laying on its base. So seam allowance on the corner side. Then, before you do anything else, I'm going to test to see if the seam is going to work properly. And we want to match that triangle to its base without any hangover, without any shortage. So you do not want your, have your connector corner, pardon me, to be short like that. And you don't want it to hang over the base and be extended too far. This is such a small seam that if either of those two things happen, you want to take it off and rip it out and redo it. Because what you'll be is get is rewarded with perfect points on your seams and, your, and all your flying geese and all the different things that you're working on. So once you have checked that your connector corner point is exactly where it's supposed to be aligned with the base, then you can take and cut off the seam allowance, uh, the extra rather, because you don't need it. All it will do is add bulk to your project. So here we have one that's done with its next step. And we're going to go back and take another connector corner and once again lay it, take the time, really place it carefully on its base. So, and check that corner make sure everything is perfectly aligned and then you've got a perfect flying goose every time. So our shoe fly star block is ready for assembly. We have our shoe fly center, we've made our four flying geese and now we've laid out our four squares for the corners. And once again you're going to sew the units into rows. We're going to press now either to the outside squares and the center for opposing seams or to the flying geese for opposing seams. 
And very often this little connection right here gives us a hard time where this is straight, almost like the plane square. So I would press to the plane, press to the shoe fly, press to the plane to get opposing seams. And then I'm gonna sew them into rows and press. Kind of doesn't matter either way um, at this point how you wanna press the rows. But we have then our shoe fly star block. And we're gonna make two of those. Next one up is our wonderful basket block. So here's our cute little cake stand block, um, cake stand basket block. And you'll notice that it has a little four patch in the center. So we're gonna just start with making a basic four patch, no mystery to that unit. And then we're going to add the flying geese made exactly the same way that I just covered. They're a little bit smaller, but same principle. And we have a plain square for the corner. And we're going to, once again, sew them into rows and press, sew the rows together and press. And we're gonna end up with a cute little unit like that. So to the center of our cake stand basket block, we're going to add these two parts right here, which I know for some of you might seem a little scary. Um, the best advice I can offer you about putting them on is that they're really not that hard. Um, we just want to make sure that you are lining up your fabric nice and even, and that you always begin sewing from the corner or the right angle and work your way to the point. You don't wanna go the other way. So for this unit, you're gonna have the triangle on top of the rectangle. And for this unit, you're gonna have the rectangle on top of the triangle. And we're pressing to the triangle. So then they get set like this and then I really believe in using these fine patchwork pins. They are specifically made for patchwork. Many of the pins that you're using are very thick and could distort the uh, patchwork when you're sewing with them. So I really highly recommend these. You can get these at your local quilt shop. They're also on my website, but they're super thin and they just go through the fabric without having any distortion. And so pinning is really helpful in this situation. And when you get into these little ends here where there's not much room, these pins are just marvelous because they will, they're so thin and they don't distort and they will keep your patchwork in perfect alignment for sewing. So you get the idea. And then from that unit, we've got our basket and we're gonna attach the corner. And my advice about attaching the corner is that you wanna fold the triangle in half and finger press. And when you're putting it together, pretending that this corner is not there, uh, you want to, you can also do the same thing to this unit by finger pressing. I also look to match up the creases. And I also look to see is the point in direct alignment with the other diagonal marks on the unit. And then we're gonna once again, pin all the way across and then sew. And we've got our adorable kickstand block. Our kickstand block is on point in the quilt. So we're going to add four corners to square it up and keep the, the kickstand block on point. And one thing I've done, which I love to do, is that this block is made larger so that you can trim it down to the six and a half inch size love when when I can do that. So uh, we don't have to be really, really careful with these corners, but you know, we're gonna do our best. So 
again, with any time that you're putting a triangle to a square, the easiest way is once again to give us that finger press. So we've got a finger press here on the cor on the triangle, and now I can do the same thing with the block. And give us a little finger press there. And now we're gonna right sides together, match up those creases and start pinning. And we're gonna pin all the way across, as you would imagine, nice and straight. So press to the triangle and repeat. And we've got our cake stand block complete. And then you will take a six and a half inch ruler and trim it on all four sides and you're ready to go. So now that our blocks are made, we can put together the center of our quilt, laying it out just as you see, um, pressing to the sashing in all cases because that will give us opposing seams. And then we're just adding a border um, around the four blocks that make up the center. The last part to make for our back in time quilt are the little sawtooth star blocks. Now they're made exactly like the big one, except that they don't have a little shoe fly in the middle. And you're gonna make 10 of those. Flying geese made exactly the same way construction of the block exactly the same way. Put five of them together and you've got the top and bottom borders. And then you're gonna add the red outer border and it's ready for quilting. I thought I'd like to show you my new fabric coming out very soon. I want to say in April sometime. This is called Country Meadow. And it is a collection of a range of beautiful historic reproduction prints in blues, creams, and greens. I had such fun designing this line and there is a quilt that goes with it. It's being made right now called Country Roads. And I'm just loving the shades and the prints and how they all flow together. And then I have one really cool fabric that is this gray print that I'm just madly in love with that has the greens and the blues and the lights in there too. So please watch for Country Meadow at your local quilt shop and it will also be on heartsbudquilts.com. My book of quilting hints, tips, secrets, and how to's contain all of the hints that I shared with you today, including 65 pages of much, much more. And you know, the part about half square triangles, making them larger and trimming them among the many hints and tips inside the hints book are charts for half square triangles, quarter square triangles, and setting square triangles that you can follow to convert your traditional patterns into making things larger so that you can trim them to size. And it's available at heartspunquilts.com. So also be sure to go to the Marcus Fabrics Facebook page Mondays with Marcus. There you will find the lineup for all of the other designers that will be participating in Mondays with Marcus. And be sure to like, follow, share, and leave a comment to win wonderful Marcus Fabrics prizes each week. The other thing I'd love for you to do is to follow me on Instagram and Facebook as I post behind the scenes photos much more regularly than I do on my blog or a newsletter. 
And I'd also love for you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Listen, thanks so much for stopping by and I will see you next time.